Chapter 7, Current Asset Management. Chapter 7 Outline What is Current Asset Management? Cost-Benefit Analysis Cash Management Marketable Securities Management of Accounts Receivable Inventory Management Summary and Conclusions Learning Objectives Extend Extend Chapter 6 Concepts of Liquidity and Risk to Current Asset Management recognizing that a firm's investment in current assets should achieve an adequate return for its liquidity and risk. Examine. Examine cash management as the control of receipts and disbursements to minimize non-earning cash balances while providing liquidity and describe techniques to make cash management more efficient. Learning Objectives Part 2. Define. Define the various marketable securities available for investment by the firm and calculate the yield on these instruments. Characterize. Characterize accounts receivable as an investment resulting from the firm's credit policies. Outline the considerations in granting credit and evaluate a credit decision that changes credit terms to stimulate sales. Learning Objectives Part 3. Assess. Assess inventory as an investment and apply techniques to reduce the costs of this investment. Current Asset Management Current asset management is controlling and managing the current assets of a firm, most time-consuming job of a financial manager. Deals with allocating resources among the current assets, cash, marketable securities, accounts receivable, and inventory crucial to long-term success or failure of a business. Cost-Benefit Analysis Cost-Benefit Analysis provides a framework to identify all the resultant changes arising from a decision. It must consider explicit and implicit costs and benefits. Opportunity costs are implicit costs and are foregone benefits from next best alternatives. Example. Opportunity costs of having capital tied up in current assets are the lost benefits from investing capital in other profitable investments. Cost-benefit analysis part two. Good value-adding decisions will ensue when the benefits exceed the costs. In general, the return on investment ROI is calculated as monies received divided by net capital tied up. In addition to safety and liquidity, the financial manager must also make sure that the return on current assets are, must exceed the cost of borrowing and, or the opportunity cost. Cash management. Maintain optimum level of cash, use the float, speed up collections, extend disbursements, use cash budgets. Cash Management Part 2 Financial managers want to keep cash balances to a minimum. There are two reasons for holding cash. One, for everyday transactions, main reason. Two, for precautionary measures or needs, emergencies. Goals are to speed up the inflow of cash or improve collections and slow down the outflow of cash or extend disbursements. Also, will attempt to play the float. Reasons for holding cash balances. How much to keep in cash. Transaction needs, cash flows predictable, borrowing arrangements, interest rates. Keep safety level in cash, invest in the excess. Low risk liquid investments. Savings accounts, money market funds, term deposits, treasury bills, US deposits. Earn small return on excess funds. Collections and disbursements. The cash position on the balance sheet may not portray the actual dollars available for use. Two cash balances of importance. The corporation's recorded amount. The amount available for use by the corporation at the bank. The difference between the two is called the float. Table 7-1. The use of float to provide funds. Corporate books. 
initial deposit plus deposits minus checks equals balance. Bank books. Usable funds amounts actually cleared. Initial amount, deposits, checks. The difference between the balance is the float. Table 7-2, playing the float. Corporate books. Initial amount plus deposits minus checks equals balance. Bank books. Usable funds amounts actually cleared. Initial amount plus deposits minus checks equals balance. The difference is the float. Improving collections and extending disbursements. Having monies in a bank account one day longer can make a significant difference. Make payments to local offices with checks deposited at local branches. Regional collection centers speeds up collection of AR and reduces mailing time. Lockbox system, when customers mail payment to a local post office box instead of to the company headquarters. Improving collections and extending disbursements part two. Electronic funds transfer, electronic data interchange, exchange of payments and information between companies' computers, use of debit cards and pre-authorized checks, a system where payments are automatically deducted from a bank account. Cash management analysis. Using a cost-benefit analysis, we may decide whether to set up a new cash management system. Benefits. Freed up funds. Opportunity benefit at 4%. Interest earned on funds freed up. Value of more timely information equals 240,000. Net bank fees are 180,000. So the money in from freed up funds minus the bank fees equals the net benefit, 60,000. Figure 7-1, Cash Management Network. Local offices, Central Bank Account, Corporate Headquarters, Distant Disbursement Center. Marketable Securities. Excess cash should be invested in short-term securities, marketable securities. Factors to consider in choosing these securities, yield, maturity, minimum investment required, safety, marketability. The yield return on marketable securities is 100 minus the principal divided by principal multiplied by 365 divided by the date. Figure 7-2, an examination of yield and maturity characteristics. A, treasury bills. B, government bonds. Table 7-3, Hierarchy of money market instruments and rates in percent. Investment. Prime rate, bank rate, commercial paper, bankers' acceptances, provincial government treasury bills, federal government treasury bills, overnight repo, overnight financing rate, money market deposits, term deposits and GICs, savings accounts. Figure 7-3, money market rate hierarchy. Prime rate, bank rate, overnight rate. T-bill, BA, and CP rates are short-term rates of somewhat longer maturities, fluctuating within or above the band. BA is banker's acceptance, CP is commercial paper, and T-bill is treasury bills. Management of accounts receivable. Trade credit facilitates sales. Trade credit is an effective financing source for smaller firms as they lack access to capital markets or bank financing. Accounts receivable should be deemed as an investment. The return on this current asset should be compared with the direct cost of borrowing or the opportunity cost of investing in other assets. Figure 7-4, Financing Growth in Accounts Receivable. 
marketable securities, accounts receivable, inventory, accounts payable, bank loan. Credit policy administration. Three primary policy variables to consider in conjunction with our profit objective are one, credit standards, two, terms of credit, three, collection policy. Credit standards. Credit risk analysis related to the four C's of credit. One, character. Customer's willingness to pay supplier legal union problems, willing to provide information. Two, capacity, ability to pay. Past and future profits, good management. Three, capital, assets and net worth, growing assets, low debt. Four, conditions, state of the economy and industry, impact on customer, how customer adapts to changing conditions. Terms of trade. The length of time credit is granted and whether a discount is allowed. Set different credit period to increase sales. Offer credit terms to encourage early payment. Example, 2 slash 10 net 30. This enables the customer to obtain a 2% discount if the invoice is paid within 10 days. If not, the full amount is payable within 30 days. Collection policy. Establish, establish collection procedures to obtain payment from delinquent accounts in a timely manner and regular manner. Based on, one, average collection period, two, ratio of bad debts to credit sales, three, aging of accounts receivables. An actual credit decision. Example of a firm considering a credit decision that will result in sales increasing from 100,000 to 110,000. Current and projected. Sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit margin minus selling expenses minus bad debt expense minus collection expense equals income before interest and taxes an actual credit decision. Summary of benefits costs. Incremental sales, incremental contribution margin, incremental selling expense, incremental bad debts, incremental collection costs, incremental accounts receivable, incremental opportunity cost on investment in accounts receivable, total incremental change. Inventory management. Inventory is divided into three categories, raw materials, work in progress, WIP, or unfinished goods, and finished goods. There are two basic costs associated with inventory, ordering costs and carrying costs. Optimum level of inventory will satisfy customer demand and production requirements while minimizing ordering and carrying costs. Level versus seasonal production. Level production, producing the same equal amount each month. Inventory costs are higher, operating costs are lower. Seasonal production, producing a different amount each month based on the season. Inventory costs are lower and operating costs are higher. Ordering inventory, how much do you order at one time? It depends on forecast sales or usage, cost of placing and receiving order, inventory carrying costs, and economies of scale. Inventory costs, carrying costs, storage insurance, financing costs, shortages, damages, write-offs of obsolete stock. Order costs, purchasing, systems, receiving. Figure 7-5, determining the optimum inventory level. Cost of ordering and carrying inventory, order size. Economic ordering quantity. Economic ordering quantity, EOQ. The optimal best amount for the firm to order each time. Occurs at the low point, M, on the total cost curve. The order size where total carrying costs equal total ordering costs, assuming no safety stock. Economic ordering quantity part two, carrying costs. Interest on funds tied up in inventory. 
cost of warehouse space, insurance premiums, and material handling expenses, implicit costs associated with the risk of obsolence and perishability. Ordering costs, cost of ordering, cost of processing inventory into stock. Economic ordering quantity part three. EOQ is the square root of two S, which is total sales in units, multiplied by O, ordering costs for each order, divided by C, carrying costs per unit in dollars. Economic ordering quantity part four. The total inventory costs are calculated as followed. SO divided by Q, plus CQ divided by two, where S equals total sales in units, O equals ordering cost for each order, C equals carrying cost per unit in dollars, Q equals quantity per order. Table 7-6, inventory usage pattern. Safety stock. Extra inventory the firm keeps in stock in case of unforeseen problems. Minimum level of inventory planned. Designed to minimize stockouts. Management decision based on risk of stockout, desirable level of service. Safety stock part two. We are assuming that average inventory equals EOQ divided by two plus safety stock. 400 units divided by 2 plus 50 units equals 250 units. Carrying costs now increase by $50 equals average inventory in units times carrying costs per unit. 250 units times 20 cents per unit equals $50. Just in time inventory systems. Common features. Minimum levels of inventory orders in small lot sizes, computerized order and inventory systems, electronic data interchange, short delivery times, small number of suppliers, quality control programs, potential benefits, lower carrying costs, automatic ordering, fewer accounting errors, lower quality control costs, elimination of waste. Summary and conclusions. Current assets represent a sizable investment. Firms should apply the cost-benefit analysis to allocate financial resources among cash, marketable securities, accounts receivable, and inventory. In cash management, the firm should try to keep the balance just adequate for transaction and compensating purposes. Summary and Conclusions Part 2 The firm should speed up cash collection and extend cash disbursement. Excess short-term funds should be placed in marketable securities. Accounts receivable facilitate sales at the same time are also an investment of the firm. Summary and Conclusions Part 3. Management of accounts receivable calls for determining credit standards and the forms of credit to be offered, as well as the development of an effective collection policy. Firms manage inventory using such techniques as the economic ordering quantity and the just-in-time model.